Hi. When I was 13, I came out to my friends and family and then eventually the rest of the world. I felt alone and different from other kids. They didn't really like me, you know, I didn't really get along with them. When someone looks at you with that, that look of, what's wrong with you? That just would eat me alive. While being trans itself is not a mental illness, the way that society treats trans people can cause mental illness in the trans community to be higher. You don't get to show your feelings and be weak that often without people feeling like this is a chance for them maybe to see what you're about. Writing books and sewing doesn't exactly get you cool points or friends at my age. I started my company because I felt like bow ties were my superpower. I had a very low self-esteem, but bow ties gave me confidence. It was a way I could speak without speaking. I just, I'm like, like amazed um, of the courage that you guys have to like be where you are. And I was just kind of wondering like how long it took for you to get to that point from when you felt like you were kind of at like your worst point. It just started with me like being able to tell like a small group of people and then like that small group of people kept building and I kept telling more small groups of people and it made like big groups of people and then like eventually like, I could just I just feel comfortable enough being able to talk to everybody. For me to be able to say that you know Barrett is sitting here in front of you and it was a long time and it was so worth it now that I can look back on it and see where she is and who she is and that she can sit in front of you guys that she was just a couple years ago and say, this sucks, this sucks, but here I am and I am bigger and I am braver. And every time I hang up the phone with her, I say, be the storm, baby girl. You don't stand in that rain. You need to be the storm. Everybody's learning along with me and, and it's not just about me, it's about everybody around me. And, and so once you get to that point where you accept that, the only person thinking the way that you are about yourself is you, you can kind of like move past that and kind of not get so worried about everybody else being so obsessed with the way that you are and it's mostly just you being obsessed with the way you are. I think being able to reach out to someone is really scary because then you have to admit that you're not, that you are going through things and that you're not okay. That that wall that you built up, that that has to come down in order to do that. We all here on this earth have a purpose and mine is bow ties. To the world, we may be one person, but to one person, we may be the world. When I was 16 and a half, I tried to commit suicide when I was 24 weeks pregnant with him. And I ended up in a coma. And at the time, I, like, I was taken out of the home at seven, so I was kind of similar to you, where I was getting ready to age out, I didn't have any family support, and I felt alone and was embarrassed. Like, I'm not gonna graduate, I have a kid, and you know, you get talked about, like, oh, you're pregnant in high school. It was extremely embarrassing. And like all my dreams and everything that I thought I would be felt like it was crashing. I know it feels super uncomfortable to ask somebody in that moment, like, what's wrong with you? Do it anyways, because I'm telling you tomorrow's not promised to anybody. For anyone who might be going through anything, like what with your experience, like is your kind of like final words to them? Don't give up on yourself. Don't short yourself. Don't, don't let, those thoughts, those feelings, it's really, really hard to not let it get to you. Really hard. And I understand that very, very deeply. But knowing that, you know, at 17 years, I didn't have a, a rock or a person, but I pushed myself so hard, and I'm so blessed today to at least have the people I do, you know? that it may be a while, but you gotta be able to try and push for yourself too, because you're worth it. Like when you were explaining your story, when she was explaining her story, like I started crying because like, like when people go through the same things you are, you don't know how to react to it, but like you know you're not alone, but to hear someone say that you're not alone is like a different feeling. So it just kind of like made me feel better because like I know that it's like okay to not believe this stuff even like if it's not true and just to realize that like you know people's opinions aren't as important as you make them so 
that you have to like move on or whatever and just find a way to like push through and everything. There's somebody out there who gives a shit. I promise you that. I promise you that. And the Red Gen Group has been fantastic with resources, don't you think? Numbers to call, people to talk to. You also made it more normal. The Red Gen Group made it normal to walk down the hallway like, yeah, I'm anxious. Anybody? Anybody? You know, because there was a lot, right? Who went, holy shit, I was clawing at my skin, ripping it off. But you weren't the only one. Turns out that there's a lot more like you, right? And so I think that you guys, it sucks to be a teenager. And so just take a deep breath and ask for help because somebody somewhere gives a shit. I promise you that.